and I will bless your name. Everybody, let's open our mouth and say, Give God some praise in this house. Somebody say he's worthy. Somebody holler, he's worthy. Hallelujah, he is worthy. You know, sometimes we go through things and we don't really understand what's going on. But when you have the faith, you have to trust in God that all things are working together for the good of those that love the Lord. It's a 
working. somebody respect all of the house as a matter of fact while they're getting that ready we'll take this opportunity to let you know that the homegoing services for elder johnny may jones will be this saturday calling hours are from 9 a.m until 10 a.m that is march the 13th calling hours is from 9 a.m to 10 a.m 10 a.m the service will start promptly for the homegoing service of elder johnny may jones and remember Every member and your family, friends, should be here to honor your co-pastor, amen? Yes. And her mother in the homegoing service. Nobody, listen, I, I, we love the fathers, we're not going to say that, but you know, ain't nothing like mama when she's gone. Because mama's the cook, the chef, the doctor, the transportation specialist, the therapist, the counselor. Mama was everything. She was the whooper, your yeah, chastiser. Yes, she was the chastiser. And we want to be your elder. I still, I, even as I'm talking now, I still find it hard to believe that she is no longer with us. But we do know she's in a better place called paradise. Amen. Can somebody put your hands together? Total. Come on, stay with me, media. Total praise.
we give him total praise. And do you know that when you cast all your cares hey, upon Jesus, <laughs> you know, he wants us to do that because he cares for us. We're not supposed to carry these birds around. He wants us to cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. Cares for us. Amen. Amen. How many know that the Lord cares for you? Come on, then clap your hands. Everybody turn the music up, sir. Come on, here we go. Here we go. Say Trust your cares on Jesus. Trust your cares on Jesus. For he cares. Number for us this morning. 
And because I got to hear my daughter Lelise. I got to hear my daughter, amen, Lelise. Somebody say, oh, how precious is the name of Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, it's a precious name. Oh, how precious is the name of Jesus. Amen, somebody. Amen. And we want to thank you while we're getting that together. I want to just thank on behalf of Selena and Raymond uh, for all of the donations, all of the food. We got so much food. Y'all stop bringing food by the house. I barely got my suit on to stop bringing food by the house. If you're going to bring food, then you got to bring the other thing. Bring some extracts with it. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Y'all brought so much food, so much drink. I've never seen, Sister Miller says, so much love shown by one church. That's our church. How many will say, I love my church? I love my church. I love my church. I love my church. Oh, how precious is the name of Jesus. Sing, Louise. Clap your hands, everybody. Come on. When you're lonely uh -huh. and your heart is filled with despair, remember God has God has for you. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
you had a chance to get yours in, you miss it, I'm sorry. We give God the glory. How many realize it doesn't take all day to give God the praise? It doesn't take all day for us to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. And as I said previously, uh, Selena and Raymond both have been working tirelessly, tirelessly uh, in getting things prepared, cleaning out an apartment. So I want to thank everyone. If I call a name, I'll, I'll miss somebody. And then uh, you know how we are. We're so sensitive. I won't see you in church for the next two or three weeks. So the best way to do this is to thank God for everybody. Shan, I know it's not funny, but you don't know my people. I know my people. I don't call their name. They three weeks, no show. And then when they do show, you know you forgot to call my name. The only name we call up in here on a regular basis is Jesus. That's the most important name in his house. Somebody say it's Jesus. But we do thank you, uh, all the volunteers. And every, I just, see, here's the way you do that. Everyone that aided and assisted us on yesterday, please stand to your feet. Everyone that aided and assisted us, please stand to your feet. That came out. Look at this. Can we praise God for all of our helpers on yesterday? Even back in the sound room, we're so grateful. Somebody say for each and every one of you. Amen? Amen. And today, so I asked, I called my friend, I called, sort of put him on the spot. Uh, Pastor Donnell Clark, y'all need to thank God for this great man of God. Clap your hands. Pastor Donald Donnell A. Clark Sr. Come on, you can do better than that. There, there's several reasons you need to thank God for him. For uh, one of the most important to me is that he keeps the pastor out of jail. He takes care of all of our accounting, <laughs> all of our finances. So the government come up in here, I'm not worried because he's got me together. Somebody ought to say amen. Because before uh, our finances, yeah, they were jacked up. He was calling me and saying, man, what are you doing? I said, figure it out, figure it out. I don't know what's going on. He figured it all out. He is an excellent accountant, a wonderful uh, husband, a family man, second to none, a family man. His son uh, loves his wife. And I asked him at the last minute, I said, could you, would you mind coming? Because I'm so tired. You all don't realize that I know Selena and, and uh, Raymond are tired, but this is also tired. Because uh, I work a nine to five job. Amen, somebody. And with all the things that I have to assist him with, I just didn't have it in me today. And I asked him, I said, would you please come be my guest speaker? He's from Destiny uh, Connection Ministry in that Macedonia. In Macedonia, Ohio, can we say amen for uh, Pastor Donnell A. Clark Sr. as he comes? He's coming, but before he comes, we want to acknowledge those that's watching by his website and by his church page. He is my guest speaker here at New Vision, New Day Ministry. So don't stop watching. He's still preaching and ministering to you today. I'm going to ask those, uh, you know what we do every Sunday, we ask for a small donation to help this ministry move forward. Uh, all of our children, three, no, 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 four to 11, four to 11, yeah. I want you to know, big kids, you're not going over there to play with all the, the gymnasium that I've been built over there. I've created a monster. I've never seen this many children in church on Sunday out since I built that gymnasium. But it goes to show that it's working. Our children are in church. I, I didn't hear nobody say, our children are in church. So four to 11, yeah, you can take the little one. Take the little one, and uh, then Tasha, where's Jayla? Jayla, get a little switch. Get a little switch of belt. Yeah, all the hard-headed kids that tap them across the hind pipe. It's not child abuse. That's bishop's abuse. Yeah, that's bishop. That gets that they, they don't, they don't uh, behave. You put a little, little bam-bam on the hind pipe. Yeah, try to straighten them out. The Bible says, spread a rod, you're going to spoil the child. Amen. There ain't no sense your parents getting sensitive, but they, they hit my child time out. Well, we can bring your child right back over here and they can sit next to you. Amen, somebody. Amen. In God's house, there must be order. And even in children's ministry, somebody say children's ministry, there must be order. Thank you. Uh, that's, that's Jayla. That's Jayla, right? That's the layer. I get them mixed up. You know, they both J's. I get them mixed up. That's the layer. We thank God for Jalea coming out and helping with the children's ministry. Um, we need your support. Uh, that gymnasium and all that stuff that we built on the other side was very challenging, and it was a, a tremendous financial cost, but I did it for the betterment of the adults and the children, because as you see the children, 
you see their parents sitting in the church. Somebody ought to say amen. So we're killing two birds with one stone. We're killing two birds with just one stone. Amen, somebody. So we're going to ask those that are uh, continue to give by way of uh, cash out. It's the dollar sign NVNDM. If you put in the dollar sign NVNDM, you will see that stands for New Vision, New Day Ministry. It's just the letters, the first letter abbreviation for NVNDM, New Vision, New Day Ministry. That's on our cash app. We also have Givelify, where it's under New Vision, New Day Church. New Vision, New Day Church. And then last but not least, we also have PayPal. Somebody say PayPal. PayPal, which is, is under New Vision, New Day Ministry. So you have three ways to give, three ways to give to help this ministry to move forward and us to continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Now, if you're sending that one time, that uh, uh, that $20 love gift, help us, help us, amen. Somebody tell our audience, tell them to help us, that's what to help us as we help you, as we help you and your children to build up kingdom kids and to build up a better generation of saints. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Because this, this new age millennial stuff, I, yeah, I'm, I'm still praying. But we do have some, hallelujah, we do have some millennials that's on fire for God. Amen, somebody. And that will, uh, that will step into our places when we have gone on to be with the Lord. Come on, everybody, New Vision, New Day Ministry, please stand as we will present to some, introduce to others. This is my friend, my comrade in the gospel, my ecclesiastical brother, Pastor Donnell A. Clark, Sr. Amen, amen. God bless you, Bishop Moore. Come on, give your bishop a hand. I say give your bishop a hand. Y'all can do better than that. Amen. God bless you, sir. We honor you. We honor you. He must be a man of God for me to be here today. Amen. And he said it. I thank God for, for him. I thank God for the ministry here, for Pastor Selena and her loss. We're praying for the church family. It's a devastating thing to lose your family. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just before I minister, I'm going to walk. I want you to welcome my wife, my first lady, my, my good thing. Amen. My wife of 33 years, going on 34 years, this woman has stood by my side. She's been a blessing to me, and I could not do ministry without her. As a matter of fact, she's the one that helped me make it happen for us to be here today. God bless you. God bless you. We had to pre-record our service and stream it. And, 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 uh, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, Bishop, you must be special. You must be special. This is the first time I've preached live in a church in 12 months. That's right. Ever since COVID, we've been streaming. We, we just shut our church down, shut our ministry down, and we've been streaming for our home. We have a small ministry there in Macedonia. We traditionally hold services in the YMCA in Macedonia, Ohio. And uh, when it hit, they had to shut the schools down. They shut the Y down. So all of our facilities were canceled. So we just transitioned to an online ministry. And ever since that day, we've been streaming. And this is the first time I've been away from my stream. And uh, like I said, we was up till 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock this morning getting it together, trying to get it out. But I thank you. I thank you because I couldn't have did it without my wife. She's the one that helped me put it all together, and, and I, I appreciate her. Thank you. Thank you. And just before I minister, she's going to come. She's the psalmist of the Lord, and I just need to get this together. So come on, welcome First Lady Sharon Clark as she comes. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good. He's so worthy. You guys have an awesome, can I stand back here? <laughs> you have an awesome man and woman of God. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. You know, just speaking on Bishop Moore, we've been knowing him for so, so, so long. Um, but your pastor, Pastor Selena, she and I grew up together. Y'all heard this story. And um, just coming up in the Lord's church, we who would ever think that we would both be uh, pastors' wives in the Lord's church, but I knew God had a calling on us when we were just at a young age, and God is so good, and I, I want y'all to love on her, because when you when you lose a mother, it's something different. I was just telling Bishop this in the office. You, there's a void that comes into a child. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. 
there is a void that comes in you and, and it's, it's non-replaceable. My mom has been gone almost 13 years and I still, I still long for her wisdom. I still long for her, her okay in some things and my children are grown and married and I have grandkids. So pour into her. You, you'll see along the way. You will see, but just begin to encourage her. You may not know the right things to say. Just say, I love you, and I'm praying for you, but please keep her lifted up. Oh, hallelujah, all day long. 
know God's anointing, his grace causes us to triumph. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Is it your season? Thank you for that. Is it your season? Is it your season? Have you sown some good seed? Have you sown? Amen. Thank you. God bless you. I got to get used to this COVID protocol. Have you sown something? Some of us have sown some bad seed. Some of us have sown the wrong seed. And we're reaping that. But thank God for those that have sown some good seed. This is your season to reap. You keep being faithful. You keep being steadfast. You keep keep the Lord first. Amen. Sow those seeds of righteousness. Sow those seeds of obedience. Sow those seeds and watch the Lord allow you to reap a harvest. Amen. Thank you for that. Hey, thank you for that. God bless you. Again, we are honored of the Lord to be here on this morning. We, again, worship the true and living God. We give him praise and glory and honor. We give honor to the man of God, Bishop Robert G. Moore, Jr., his wife, Pastor Selena Moore. God bless you. You ought to be grateful for your man and woman of God. You ought to be grateful for the leaders. I'm blessed. Every time I come here, I just, it's good to see some of the familiar faces. Sister Chisholm. Good to see Sister, what was her first name? Sister Cindy again. And uh, uh, some of the others. Good to see you all again. God bless you. Good to see Bishop moving forward. I see progress. God bless you. Come on, give give the Lord a hand for your man and woman of God. Second Kings is our primary text. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to the book of Second Kings. The book of Second Kings. We're looking at chapter six. Very familiar passage. Very familiar story. Nothing new. I'm just here to refresh you. I'm just here to strengthen you. I'm here to encourage you. I didn't. I didn't give you. I didn't come to bring you any new revelation this morning. I'm just going to. Give you some foundation. Refresh you. Beginning of verse number 8. It says, you with me? It says, Then the king of Syria warned against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall, I, shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, Beware, saying, Beware, thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned of him and saved himself, therefore, not once nor twice. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me? Which one of y'all is a traitor? Which one of y'all telling my business? Which one, which one of y'all spoiling the plan? And the servant said, None, my lord, O king, but Elijah the prophet, that man of God, that preacher, that is in Israel, telleth the king Israel, the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bed chamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I might send and fetch him. And, he, and when he has told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, the host compassed the city, uh, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? How shall we do? Verse 16 is where I want to get to. It said, he said, Fear not. He answered him and said, Fear not. Look at your name and say, Fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now, there are several different texts or subjects or uh, topics you can take from this text. But bear with me here as I speak from these words. God is in control. God is in control. Come on, say that with me. God is in control. God is in control. God is in control. Father, let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer, in Jesus' name. Cause your word to come forth with power and boldness, Lord. Give us clarity of speech, clarity of hearing, Lord. Let the people hear what the Spirit is saying to the church on this morning. In Jesus' name. All the Lord's anointed said, Amen. 
Amen. You can take your seat this morning. God is in control. God is in control. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that ring true. God is in control. In spite of the circumstance you're facing, in spite of the situation you're dealing with, in spite of the lack, in spite of whatever situation you find yourself in this morning, this past week, this past month, nevertheless, this past year, God is still in control. He is still in control. Do I have a witness? Do I have a witness? Control, control, the power to influence or direct people's behavior or course of action. That's what Webster uh, defines control as, the power to influence or direct people's behavior or course of action. To, to exercise restraining or uh, uh, di directing influence over somebody or something, like controlling your anger. You know how it is. Some people tick you off, they get on your nerves and you get mad. And sometimes you have to what? You have to what? Control your anger. You have to control. You have to bring yourself in, right? Or a single company controls the industry. You know how uh, there's a big conglomerate like, 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 you know, maybe like Walmart or something like that, trying to put the little guy out of business. They got a monopoly on the market. They have what we call the control over a market. Or it could be uh, uh, to reduce the, 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 the incidence of severity of especially uh, uh, inconspicuous level of control or population. Could be like, you know, if you, you got pest control. Trying to, trying to be discreet a little bit about that. You know how it is when you got too many critters running around the place. What do you do? You call the exterminator because you need to bring this situation under what? Control. Y'all can help me preach. Y'all can help me preach. You got to bring the situation under control. Under control. Well, Elijah, let me just give you a little background. Elijah, he was a man of God. He was, he was the protege of Elijah. And uh, he had served this man, and, and this man had, had been used to situations like this when things were out of control. As a matter of fact, the Bible records that Elijah performed at least five miracles that are noted in the Scripture, five separate miracles. There was, there was a miracle of the woman, the Shunammite woman. Her, her son was sick, and he, he, raised, he, he died, and, and uh, the prophet raised him from the dead. There, there were several miracles. This man, he caused the axe head to float. In this previous text, there, there was another miracle. There, there were several miracles. So this man was used to dealing with situations when people were out of control, when people felt out of control. Have you ever felt like things were out of control in your life? Have you ever felt like your finances was out of control? You got too much debt for your bills. You got too much month for your money. You, you, you just don't have enough to make the ends meet. You know how they say you got to make ends meet. It's a picture of a circle. You're trying to pull two ends together to make the meat. There's just not enough. Things are out of control. Or parents, have you ever felt like your children are just out of control? Especially those teenagers. They get hard-headed. They get rebellious. They get, they get mouthy. They start talking back. I can talk from experience because I got five kids. My, my wife and I, we've raised four sons. And I have a daughter from a prior marriage. But we've raised five children. And, you know, we, we had our experience. We, we had some experience. I had one of them get, 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 you know, come up in my face one. Yeah. You know, he's still living, thank God. He's still living. But but uh, 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 things can get out of control. Have you ever felt like things were out of control on the job? You know, you know that boss is getting on your nerves. They ride you. They, 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 they got stuff on you. You're stressing you this. And, and, and things are out of control. Well, I'm here to remind you that in spite of all the circumstances that you're facing, in, in spite of all the situations that you're dealing with, you, you, you know, things are are out of your hands, yet God is in control. Yet God is in control. God is in control. God is in control. Whatever your circumstance we find ourselves in, according to the book of Isaiah 41, verses 8 through 10, it says, But thou, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed out of Abraham, my father, when thou hast taken uh, from the ends of the earth and called thee, uh, from the chief men thereof, and said unto him, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not to cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. That's what I was trying to get to. I am with thee. See, God is in control, and I'm here to remind you that in spite of what you see, in spite of the confusion, the, the, the frustration, or, or, or the circumstances you find yourself in, God is with you. He is here with you. In the text here, we have a, a situation. The man of God was beginning to, uh, uh, Elijah, he was, a, he was more than just a prophet. He was more than just a preacher. He was an advisor to the king of Israel. He would give him instruction 
Now, a lot of times the, the king didn't take his advice. Sometimes he didn't, sometimes he did. Well, in this case, the man of God, the prophet, had insight from the Lord. Listen, it's important to have people in your life that can get an insight and a, a connection to get some information from the Lord to be, able, to be able to share that on your behalf. It's very important that there is somebody in your life that is hearing from the true and living God. Y'all can wake up. Y'all can preach at me. Come on. Come on. Wake up. It's important that we hear, that, that, we, that there's somebody that has a connection to God that can hear God on your behalf. Well, here it is, the king of, of Israel at this time, he, he was being advised by the prophet, and, and, and uh, the, the, the king of Syria was planning, plotting, scheming to take him down. He wanted to take him out. You know, that, that's how the enemy is. He, he's got some plans. He's got some plots. He's got something to cause you to get frustrated. He's got some, some kind of stumbling block to put in your way. He's got something to frustrate your purpose. He's got something to get on your nerves in the household. Sometimes it's your husband. Sometimes it's your wife. Sometimes it's the kids. Sometimes it's your next door neighbor. Sometimes it's your dog or your cat. I don't know what your situation is, but the enemy can use anybody that makes themselves available to frustrate your purpose. And he, he, ain't, he ain't slack according to his job. He will always be on time performing his job. He ain't sleeping. He ain't slumbering. He ain't slacking. He ain't lazy. He ain't loafering. He is on his job. He is on his duty. So that, it, that, that makes us incumbent to, it's incumbent upon us to make sure that we are on our game, to make sure we're keeping up with our prayer life, to make sure that we are constantly praying before the Lord, to make sure we're constantly uh, taking the word in, feeding on the word of God, feeding our spirit man. Because what you don't feed will die. If you don't feed your spirit man, if you don't get the word of God in your heart, uh, uh, when, 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 when the pressure comes, you, you're spewing out things based on your natural instinct. You know how it is, your reflex. Your reflex. You don't have your spirit man prayed up. You'll begin to operate in reflex in the flesh. And that's the worst place to be. Well, back to the text. The man of God, he got up early in the morning. He came out and he looked and he surveyed the situation. And he saw all of these chariots lined up. The enemy had plotted to take them out. The enemy had desired to kill, steal, and destroy. That's the devil's job. He, he is just on the prowl to kill, steal, and destroy. I'm reminded of the story of, 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 of uh, what's the guy's name? Man, I can't even think of his name. God help me. <laughs> no, not David. The, the enemy was going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. And the, the scripture said, Jesus, God said, have you considered my servant Job? That's it. I couldn't think of Job. I, was, I had a brain freeze right there. Have you considered my servant Job? The enemy was going to and fro in the earth, seeking whom he may devour. And the Bible said, God said to Satan, where you been? Where you been? He said, I've been running around seeing what kind of trouble, what kind of situation, what kind of turmoil I can, I can stir up. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? I wonder if the Lord asked Satan about our situation. Could he say, have you considered my servant? And put your name in that blank. Could he say that? Could he say that? You see, he knew the end of the story before the beginning. Okay? He knew the outcome because God was in control. He knew that, that Job was a committed man. He knew that Job was upright, according to the scripture. He was an upright man. He was a man that feared God. He was a man that eschewed evil. He was a man that had his household in order. This was a man that, that God could trust with temptation. This was a man that God could trust with a bad situation. Can God trust you in a bad situation? Can God trust you when things go wrong? Can God trust you when, 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 when you lose a parent? I can stand here and say that. that. This past year, I lost my father. God, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't flinch. I didn't shake. It was unexpected. We wasn't, you know, it, it was. It, it happened. It happened. We were praying for Pastor Selena, and I, I'm sure that God can trust her. I'm sure that God will move her through this. And, and I'm not saying that you won't have have uh, sorrow. You won't have a time of mourning. You won't have. You, you have to go through that. That's. That's part of the protocol. You have to go through that season of mourning because you, you, you will hurt yourself if you try to act like you're bigger 
them your problems. You will hurt yourself. The scripture says you need to cast your cares on him for he cares for us. And he, he's, he's acquainted with the infirmities of our weakness, of our sickness. He's, he's acquainted with our situations and our circumstances, okay? Let me get back on text here. The man of God came out and surveyed the situation. He surveyed the situation, and he was distressed. He was discomforted. He was concerned. He was, he was annoyed. He, he, was, he, he was worried. And you know what he did? He said, you know what, man of God, so what, what, how are we going to handle this? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Verse number 16, he said, at last, my master, how shall we do? How are we going to get out of this mess? Have you ever been in a situation you just begin to ask the question, Lord, how, how am I going to get out of this? How am I going to deal with this circumstance? How am I going to overcome this problem? How am I going to overcome this, 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 this breach? Maybe there's a breach in a relationship. Maybe somebody got on your nerves and you have told them off real good. Y'all know how we do sometimes. You have told them off real good and now you regret what you said and, and you got to go back and apologize. And, or maybe, maybe it's, a, it's a situation where you, you, you know, you, you've overextended yourself. It's nobody's fault but yours, but you saw that dress. You saw that shoes. You saw, you saw that toolbox, brother. You saw that, you saw that big boat or whatever it is you fancy yourself about. You just had to have it, but you overextended yourself and you say, well, how, how am I going to deal with this situation? What are we to do? The man of God said to Elisha. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray to open his eyes. One of the problems in our Christian walk is that our eyes are closed to the things of the Spirit. Our eyes are closed. Your eyes are wide open, but you're walking with them wide shut. You're seeing in the flesh. You're moving in the flesh. You're moving in your circumstance. You're moving in the natural, in the now, in, in what you can see, touch, feel, and taste. But God moves in the Spirit. He, he can move beyond what we see. He moves. See, things are happening right now in the atmosphere that you can't see in, a, in your natural eyes. Things are happening right now. God is moving on your behalf. He's sending angels working on your behalf. If you trust him, if you, if you know him, if you're in fellowship with him, he's making the way plain for you. Maybe the enemy's got something set up down the road for you, got a situation for you. He's trying to set you up. He's trying to get you off task. He's trying to cause you to lose your faith, cause you to lose your anointing. Well, God is watching out for you. He's watching out. There's stuff working right now on your behalf. But when we're blind to it, when we're... When we're, when we're not prayed up, when we're not filled up in the Word of God, when we haven't refreshed our minds with the Word of God, if we haven't caused the, the Word to change our perception. See, a lot of times we are caught up in society's uh, idea of how things should go, and we get squeezed into the mold of this world. But the Scripture says, be not conformed to this world, but we need to be transformed. How do you do that? By the renewing of your mind. It takes the Word of God to transform us. It takes the Word of God, to cause us to begin to see in the Spirit, to begin to see what God would have us to see. Amen? So the man of God, he prayed. Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes, open his eyes, that he may see, that he may see, that he may see, that he may see. In other words, I already see it. I can already see the end from the beginning. I already know that you're moving on, on, on our behalf. So I, I, I don't have to worry about it because I know that you're in control. When you can't see your way, you start acting frantic. You start acting concerned. You start trying to move things in the flesh. And, and, and it, it's, it just never turns out good when you do that. It just never turns out well when you do that. Amen? He said, open his eyes that he may see, that he may see. And according to the scripture, and the Lord opened his eyes, and a young man saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots, and a fire round about Elijah. And the story went on to say, you know, Elijah led the men out, he did it's a whole bunch of other stuff, but that's not really what I'm magnifying on this morning. What I want to bring to your mind today, I want to present to you, is that no matter what you're facing, no matter what circumstances you're dealing with, no matter how bad it seems right now, guess what? God is still in control. God is still in control. Come on, y'all need to let that ring. God is still in control. He is still in control. He is still in control. You, you think you're facing 
uh, uh, potential eviction. Well, guess what? God is still in control. Yes. Maybe you're facing potential divorce. I don't know what your situation. Maybe there's a rift that you feel like it can't be healed. There's, there's no potential for mending this situation. But you know what? God is still in control. This morning, I, I just want to leave you with that. Again, no deep revelation, no, no new news. No, no, I'm just trying to remind you, don't take the burden on yourself. Don't try to carry the whole load yourself. Don't try to do all the work yourself. Don't try to, you know, lift uh, uh, the, the whole way to move mountains on your own. You've got to realize that God is in control. And you know what that means? When he's in control, he will make things happen in his own time. When he's in control, he will give the increase that you need to bring the things to pass. When he's in control, he will cause all the things to, to come into place. Because God is in control. Because God is in control, we, we can trust in our future. You don't have to worry about tomorrow. We don't have to worry about what things are going to look like on tomorrow because God is in control. According to Jeremiah, he says, for I know the thoughts and plans concerning you. He, he got thoughts of good things for you, thoughts to give you an expected end. Because God is in control, you don't have to worry about your children. You don't have to worry about your grandchildren. You don't have to worry about them running the streets and, and you know, you're trying to teach them and bring them to church. Thank God for the bishop. He got the jumping thing going on. He got the, he got the big playground going in the back. That's great wisdom. That's great. To get them into the house of God, to get them, to get them excited about coming to church. It's one thing to be made to church, but it's another thing when they wake up excited, can't wait to get there because they just want to jump. Well, you know what? That's a seed that's planted in that's them. A seed. And, and, and God will cause this thing to come to pass. He will cause it to grow and, 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 and begin to use that seed to draw them into the kingdom. So, you know, they won't just be coming to jump on a jumping jack. They'll be coming to jump in his presence. They'll be coming to run and, and praise his name yes, and give him praise and glory for, for the things that he's done in their life. So, because God is in control, we don't have to worry about our children. We don't have to worry about them. All we got to do is do our part. Amen. Your part is to train them up, Amen. teach them the word of God. Be consistent. Be consistent. Be consistent. You know what? If they don't feel that you're consistent, they will try you every time. They will push you to the line, to the limit. But be consistent. If you tell them you're going to do something, do it. If you tell them there's a penalty for doing this, and they do it, they cross the line, and you don't punish them, guess what? They're going to go further the next time. They're going to keep going. They're going to keep trying, trying, and trying to push the limit until you, you know, do what you need to do. But because God is in control, because God is in control, we can forgive those that have wronged us. That's a big one. That's a big one. By God. Because y'all know how we do. Sometimes we, we want to we wanna say we forgive them, but I ain't going to forget it. I got my eye on you. I forgive you, but I got my eye on you. I'm watching you. I, I ain't let it go. I, I, you know, but, but because God is in control, you can release it. You can release it. Because God is in control, guess what? You can pray in faith, and things will happen because you pray in faith. Because God is in control. There's no need to fear what's going on in our nation. There's no need to worry about anything that's going on. Because God, God is, in is in control. God is in control. In my conclusion, I, I just want that to echo and ring in your ear. God is in control. If you feel like things are out of control, if you feel like you don't understand what to do, if you, you're just nervous, you're concerned about your future, you're concerned about your children, you're concerned about whatever the situation is, just stop. Take a minute. Take a minute. Rest your mind. Release. Release the stuff unto the Lord. Just release. Let it go. Let it go. Pray that the Lord would open your eyes so that you can see him moving on your behalf. And then you'll realize, too, that in spite of all the turmoil that the enemy has got, all the plot that he's got against you, God is still in control. Amen. Amen. Come on, clap your hands for the word of God. If you believe it, come on, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. God is in control. Come on, let's all stand. Bishop, you want me to have an altar call? What, what you want to do? Amen. I don't have my, my connection here. I usually be pressing my music from my app. But God is in control. If you feel like the, the message ministered to you, maybe you've been running out of control. Maybe things are out of control. Maybe, yes. maybe your life, your whole life, you feel like it's out of order, out of control. You don't have any direction. You don't have any purpose. You don't have any, any plan. You don't have, you just get up and just go, 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 go. Out of control, out of order. Maybe you, you, 
you just feel like your family's out of control, why don't you lift your hands and I'll just Hallelujah. begin to pray with you. We'll, we'll agree in prayer right from your seat. You don't have to come down to the altar. We, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for this lesson, this, this timely word for us to understand that in spite of the circumstance, in spite of everything that we see, in spite of all that's, that we've experienced on this past week and even this past year, Amen. we realize that you are in control, not the government, not the government, not the mayor, not, 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 the, not the president, but you are in control of our destiny. You are in control of our futures. You are in control of, of our outcome, Lord. And we trust you. We, tr we put our trust in you, Father. We put our trust in you. We trust in the Lord with all our heart. Lean not into our own understanding. Yes. Father, in all our ways, we'll acknowledge you. And we pray that you'll direct our path, Father. God, I pray that you cause those that are under the sound of my voice, those that feel like things are out of control. Lord, I pray that you would help them to trust you. Hallelujah. With their futures. Help them to trust you with their pain, with their problems, with their discomfort. Help them to trust you with their dis, dis uh, uh, with, with their dis this disconnected, Lord. Amen. Lord, I pray right now, God, that you would give them grace. Remove the scales from their eyes that they would see in the spirit. Remove the scales from their eyes that they could see that you have more for us than there is against us. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.